Hi guys, this is Chandra Shaker. Uh, it's been a while me making a video and posting it on my YouTube channel uh, as I have been really busy uh, lately. And uh, uh, today uh, I'm going to share some of the experience that I have been uh, uh, playing around with SQL Server uh, regarding uh, uh, with the XML. So uh, today what we're going to see is we're going to try to convert uh, the relational uh, data types, the, the the data which is sitting in tables, and we're going to convert them into uh, XML uh, data structure. So uh, that's what the focus today is. So uh, we will be concentrating uh, much on uh, how to uh, write the basics so that we would be able to extract those data and produce XML files. So uh, let's get started. So I have my uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, as you would have noticed, I have connected to uh, AdventureWorks uh, database. So uh, this is going to be a fairly uh, short video, and I'm trying to uh, restrict myself to uh, to to share uh, the content within uh, 10 minutes. Uh, I hope I would uh, I would be able to do that one. And uh, so let's get started. Yep. So uh, this is my first uh, uh, script. So uh, I'm trying to extract. Uh, the list of employees. So I'm going to extract top five employees from the uh, employee table. So let's run this one. So uh, we are getting five uh, records from that table. So all you got to do is basically type this keyword called for XML auto. So uh, this will build uh, XML data structure automatically for us. So, uh, so we're going to run this and see uh, that we it has created uh, XML and you can click on that one it's a link and uh, you might have noticed that right now we have uh, a beautiful XML data type over here all right let's move further so uh, the second script what it's showing us is after creating an automatic XML I'm going to add a keyword called type so what is this type is going to do here is actually uh, the, the, the first script, it's, it's just uh, n bar car. But however, when I add this keyword called type to the script here, uh, right now, the data that has been rendered over here, it's, it's n bar car. But instead of n bar car, it's, it's going to be uh, XML data type. So you can't really see that one, uh, see the difference actually. but but that's what uh, theoretically uh, it does behind the scene. So it's just the same results, but the data type uh, that it returns the values is, is XML data type. So uh, we'll keep moving further. So the third script is, I have added a, another keyword called elements. So what is this elements is going to do? So let me show you and uh, you can guess it probably. So now, you would have noticed that we had everything as an attribute, but right now everything has been represented as beautiful elements. So right now we are able to see each column of this table employees. So each column of this table of this uh, of this employee has been represented as an element here. So that's what uh, the keyword element does for us. So the next script, what does it do is I have, I'm exposing you guys with a new keyword called root here. So right now with this result type, you would have noticed that we don't have a root element. So how can we do that? So all you got to do here is to add this keyword called root to this existing script and hit F5 and view the result. You can see beautiful root element has been added uh, into our XML structure. Moving further down, what I have done is right now I'm going to show you the power of you're, you're really unhappy that I don't want the word called root uh, in, in as, a, as a root element. Instead, what I would like to have is I would like to modify, you might be asking me a question that can I modify this root element with some other name? Yes, you can do that one. 
with the help of the script. All you got to do here is it's just a basic select statement from that employee table and the same structure is it's just the same script but I'm restricting the column uh, names here uh, by selecting specific columns and then all you got to do here is you have to open the braces and uh, just type in this name so right now instead of root as a root element it's going to be my root here so that's what I'm, I'm trying to show you guys so if you click on this link you can see the root has been renamed to my root so uh, that's that's the difference with this script so right now you might be saying you might be asking me that okay uh, I, don't, I don't want to expose my my column names like this can, can I rename it yes you can rename each and every aspect of this XML element that's what we're going to see in the next script so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to add alias for each of the column name like how we used to do for the normal tsql statement and then we have a table here called as employee and we can also change we can also add alias for this table as employees and let's run this and we'll see what difference that this guy brings up so as you would have noticed that we have changed uh, we were able to manipulate the name of each uh, elements that's going to be displayed here on this XML file all right what we got next <clears throat> the next one is till here uh, we have been uh, producing XML file based on auto but instead what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce another keyword called as raw there isn't much difference between auto and raw but it gives you the flexibility that you can rename uh, your elements uh, more uh, in, in an easy way when you're going to have a very complex TCQL. So right now, let's say we we are able to do it right now in auto itself with the help of this alias. But however, right now I have the alias for this employee table as employees, and and I'm going to give a new name called my employees so that we're going to test who's who's going to be really powerful in manipulating names actually. So raw actually wins this race, I think. Uh, that's what I saw, and you would have seen that this my employees is has been overwritten on this employee, even though we have an alias uh, being mentioned here. So I would like to uh, show you these uh, these kind of small uh, uh, tips probably might be helping you. So that's the only benefit that you have over here. And apart from that, I would like to show you guys that. Uh, that what what happens if there is a null value in in our data structure so I'm going to open this table and uh, quickly what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit top 200 rows and uh, we, as you can see here that this business entity number one the organizational node is actually carrying a null value so I'm going to show you guys what's what's going to happen uh, in, in, in the XML data type itself. So uh, you would have noticed that the job title here is Chief Executive Officer. However, however I uh, would like to show what's the difference. So can you know, can you see the My Organizational Node, uh, which is supposed to be present for the first uh, set of data but it is not there because we have a null data type. So if you have a null uh, data on, on, on a particular row of your table, that, that has been just skipped. So that's what happens when you use raw keyword. However, when you use this auto, and if you look at here, this also skips it. So that's the beauty here. So if you have a null values, you don't need to really represent that one in the XML data type because in XML data type uh, th there is no provision that you can handle the null values that 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 becomes really uh, sometimes a hassle uh, when you're dealing uh, the data which has to be exchanged from your database server to the to the web services uh, the, ser the server which is hosting web services so handling null types null data types is, is has always been uh, 
uh, uh, biggest question. Uh, so that has been handled here for us uh, in the TCQ that we have written. So that's it, guys, in this video. So, uh, so uh, I hope you guys would have enjoyed it. And uh, as I have promised, I have finished this video uh, uh, close to 10 minutes. And uh, see you guys in the next videos where I would be able. I hope that I would be able to provide more information uh, and uh, more interesting videos are up upcoming. Okay, thank you very much.